Hi everyone and welcome back to my series of SimSig tutorials and in this one I want to look at Derby which I believe is a simulation you get for free when you download the main SimSig system files. I did have it before and so I'm not sure if I still have it because I had it before or because it is still free but either way this is another quite fun one I would say kind of medium level difficulty so it will certainly stretch you a bit but if you leave the settings all down to kind of the easiest level then you should be fine so when you first start this definitely all settings to beginner use the uh, 2006 and later era and that will uh, significantly reduce the amount of work that you're going to have to do and the other thing that you can do is you can turn on train operated route release and what that is, is that's a system that's available on most modern signaling systems, which would mean, for instance, if I set a route from uh, here over into here, as soon as the train goes across it, then the signal switches off and I can set another route without having to cancel the previous route first. Uh, pretty much might as well leave it on. It just, just kind of saves time. With setting things back uh, before you use them again and it just gives one less thing to worry about on a simulation that's kind of as busy as this now the first thing that you notice when you turn it on is this is quite a long simulation don't let that worry you too much because in 2006 the line across the bottom here which is the kind of Barden Hill line is basically not in use at all Brake low power station, sorry, Drake low power station is out of use. So there's nothing happening down here at all. So in fact, you use nothing below this line. You get a very occasional freight comes in here from Barden Hill, usually into Mantle Lane TC. And just be aware that this is a CCTV control level crossing. So you need to lower this yourself. But otherwise, you do almost nothing down here. And then what we have here, this is the main line from Birmingham. So the cross-country services up to Derby and to the north come from here and they come up to uh, Wicknell Junction here where you have Barton Central Rivers Depot, which is a cross-country trains depot. We'll talk about that in a second. And then Alrawas Junction here goes to Litchfield High Level Station through to Aston and basically the suburban line into Birmingham that way. So a couple of freights go that way and a few empty coaching stock trains but not a massive amount of freight along there. Then the main line continues up here. You have Burton on Trent Station. Most trains stop there, but not all of them. Then Clay Mills Junction, another CCTV level crossing. That's a real pain because you always have to keep your eye on that one. And then when we get to North Staffs Junction and Stenson Junction, most traffic goes straight across in the way that you can see it's autoed at the moment. There are occasional freights to and from the Nottingham kind of junction via Chelliston, but not very many. So leave these signals autoed like this. And then when you do get a train, these trains here on approach, they take quite a long time to come around here. So you don't have to rush that. And then there is one train an hour up towards Stoke and Crewe and another service coming back the other way. But again, you've got a bit of time when it says that it approaches here. You've got time to have a look, see whether there are any trains coming along here. And if not, just close down that route there to allow that train in. And likewise, close down this route and that route there to get the train back out. These are automatic half barrier level crossings, so we don't need to worry about that. Then when we get up here, we come towards Derby Station. A bit of a pain in the neck kind of station because of the layout. But we'll talk about that in more detail in a second. Then we have Sheet Stores Junction. Notice that's the same name as here because it's the same junction. This is just trains effectively going north would come through here. And trains either going south or going to Stoke would come that way round. But like I say, that's mostly a couple of freight trains. Most of the traffic's coming up this junction here. So this goes to Nottingham and London if you're going all the way to London. Comes up here into Derby. You've got the main station of Derby. And then coming out the top, pretty much a twin track kind of main line goes up to Claycross Junction, which goes towards Chesterfield and almost to Sheffield in that kind of direction. And then a single track branch to Matlock, which is also in use. So we'll look at all of those pretty briefly. Uh, so, yeah, it, the length of the of the simulation really is uh 
kind of hides the fact that it's not quite as difficult as it looks but down here the only thing of note is the Elford goods loop now this is reasonably long it might just about fit two freight trains in but it's close so if you've got one of the 500 meter container trains you're only going to fit one of those in so consider that a single train loop but when you send a train to Kingsbury ground frame which is about two or three freights a day you need to uh, get permission from a Kingsbury ground frame by placing a call. Hopefully you've done that before, but except I paused. Kingsbury shunt frame, permission for train. If you don't get permission, it's best to make sure that you keep the train back here. Obviously, you could hold it back further if you needed to. So that's the only really thing of note here. Most of this stays autoed. When we get to Wicknell Junction, usually during the day, I would have this autoed across here. I've just sent a freight to Arrowas, which is why that is not enabled. And I usually leave that autoed as well. Now, Barton Central Rivers Depot gets a lot of action in the early morning, as you might expect. Lots of empty coaching stock trains, most of which go south towards Birmingham. One or two go north as well. There isn't anything particularly magic here. But what happens is if you get a train, you'll get a message saying, you know, trains waiting at BD2. Now, I've set my options, which you can do in here. If you go to uh, show options, uh, where is it? Is it here? Yeah, if you untick right click cancels route, that is quite a handy option. But if you untick it, then when you right click it, you actually get to know what signals which. So you might think that's BD1 and that's BD2, but actually that's BD2 and that's BD4. So just so that you know that. Uh, you, most of them, I think, come out of BD2. They'll tell you there's a train ready to go, which will kind of come out onto the, the shunt neck here. And then in a normal way, you just signal it to wherever it needs to go. So that's fairly straightforward. You will need to interpose the head code onto it, though. That's not automatic here, to be careful. And likewise, in the north, same kind of thing. You'll get a message saying a train at Barton Central Rivers north. And again, just set the, the um, route from that signal to wherever and you're good to go. So that's fairly straightforward. If you uh, need to send a train in, then you need to signal a train to that signal there, BD1. So you put it there and then you leave it. And it will, after a while, it will automatically get signaled into one of the roads. But that's something that the depot does. So just get the, the thing to there and then uh, everything's good. So nothing like deadly there, really. Then the two tracks up to Burton on Trent now. It's a little bit hit and miss here with the goods trains. The problem with these goods lines is they're only 15 miles an hour, so they're very, very slow goods lines. So you'll find that some of the, the freight is actually timetable to go onto the goods loop. That doesn't mean you have to use a goods loop, but probably a, a good kind of word of wisdom is if the train's running fairly late and you don't need to put it on the goods loop, then keep it on the main line. That's not a problem. If it's running really early or if you've got, you know, fast trains, class one trains like this kind of coming up its back, then you might decide to put the train to the goods loop just to get it out of the way. But like I said, very slow. So just be warned about that. Uh, nothing particularly magic about that. Like I say, we don't use this uh, loop down here. So pretty much it's just uh, a four track section. Uh, like I say, most of the trains stop at Burton, but they don't all stop at Burton. So be aware that if a train isn't stopping, by the time it gets to about here, you want to lower Clay Mills Crossing. You can put a route across it before it's lowered, but obviously that's not going to go green until you clear it. So, uh, yeah, when the train's about here, if the trains are stopping at Burton, then obviously wait till they're about to leave or wait till they're just leaving. And then you can set the route then. So that's fine. These things are annoying. It's good good idea to attach one of the sounds to it. So again, you can do that in options, messages. And here where you've got the various level crossing things, you can pick like level crossing clear. You can play a sound from your computer just to draw your attention to it. Because when it's all kicking off, it's happened a few times. You end up with a train sitting at a red signal because the level crossing is still up. So uh, be aware of that. When the trains are coming here, if they're class one trains and they're going or, or and or they're going on the main line, then usually by the time you get the warning, which happens about here, that there is a train approaching clay mills. It's usually safe to lower it then the train, uh, you know, by the time you've cleared it, the train will be pretty much here. So that's all good. Nothing too tricky. If it's a freight train, and it's going on a goods, the goods line, then that signal won't clear 
until the train is right next to it clears on approach so you don't need to desperately get the level crossing down if you've got a freight train you can virtually wait for it to be kind of hitting that signal before you lower it and then that will go down into the goods loop just fine again nothing special here it's just the junction like i say i leave it autoed this way because most of the trains are crisscrossing this junction in this, this direction if you get a train here um i don't even know if that one's is that one coming my way Stenson Junction so that's obviously just uh, just arriving into the area that will take a while to get around here so I've got time to find a, a path for it in the middle of all the other trains so it's pretty straightforward Sunny Hill goods loops I haven't used them yet but they are very very long so you've got space for a good two three or four freight trains in there if you need to so um, use them if you need to use them but usually by the time you get here you've got space on the goods lines if you need it as we get up into Derby, the biggest pain about Derby is that the layout of the station makes train movements really, really difficult. So, for instance, lots of empty coaching stock comes from Etches Park Depot. It will either come into the station at this front way or the most common way is it comes up the connect line, up goods into Chatterston Curve here and then reverses back into a platform in that direction. But uh, obviously doing that's going to block the goods lines. All of these lines are 15 miles an hour, so it's a very, very slow station. It's not the kind of station where you can quickly throw a freight train th through before a train like this arrives for um, Platform 4. So just be aware of that. It's a very, very slow station. The other thing that's tricky is access into the platforms. So on the, the, the main down line here, if you carry on the down line here, you can only get into platform one, two, and three. If you're going into platform four, five, or six, you have to cross over at this point and come up the, the wrong line, as it were, to kind of come that way. So again, if you're coming into platform four, you're going to be blocking any trains that go down towards um, Sheet Stores Junction, which is most of them. So just be aware of all of that. The main trick here, I think, is keep an eye on the scheduled times. That's uh, designed to come in that's timetabled in at, at 207 if i check out that one well that's due to leave for kingsbury up that direction at 206 but that's fine so i can get that out along here without blocking that one and then one d63 well that's not supposed to leave till 10 past two so even if i get train ready to start from this one i'm not going to signal that down here until this is coming to platform four out the way some of the things are going to leave a bit late. There's not much you can do about that, but it's very easy to block this station up if you're not careful. So just be aware of that. Most of these kind of other sidings and stuff here, most of it's not in use on the 2006 timetable. That's why it's a good idea to start there. Some of the older timetables have a lot more traffic, places like Sinfin and all these kinds of stuff. So all sorts of fun by the time you've got used to it. But um, but otherwise, just be very religious about um, arrival and departure times. So then we come out the other end, the north end of Derby Station. You have Bredsall down goods is a very is a long goods loop again. So you fit at least two trains in there. Uh, goods trains, obviously, if you need to, uh, because one of the things I've noticed here is it takes quite a long time for the trains to actually travel along this line. Even the, the kind of class one trains that are supposed to be 90 or 100 miles an hour, they seem to take a little bit longer um, to travel than you'd expect. So you've got all these freights kind of coming up here. It's very easy for the freight to end up in the way. So just be mindful of that. Don't try and go too far with a freight train in one go unless you know you've got nothing back here. So You've got a goods loop here. You can use at Bredsall. You've got uh, another longish uh, loop here at Broadholm. Likewise, trains coming down from Clay Cross. You'll get a Class 6 train. And then as soon as a Class 6 train appears here, right behind it, you've got, you know, one VO5. And you're thinking, oh, great. So you've got to get the, the Class 6 into the loop here to get the Class 1 behind it. But there's usually lots of delays. I mean, I think at the minute I'm at 87%. So uh, it's not a, not a high scoring simulation for sure. Now, the only other kind of tricky bit here is the single line at Matlock. It's not particularly tricky, but it's just one of these kind of clockwork mechanisms that you've got to get used to. So what happens here is 2A38 is going to go up into Ambergate Station. 
at some point you will get a message on here saying that it is requesting the token release and that is like a lot of token machines the signaler has to give permission for the token to be taken out of the machine and you know there obviously could be different reasons why you might not release it but in this case it's only a single track so it's not like i'm going to be able to bring anything down the other way while there's a train in the station but but hey whatever you'll get a message saying to release it to release it you just left click the release button at that point the train driver will take the token out you'll see that light will go from there to there and you need to make sure that you signal from that signal up to the exit arrow at matlock uh if you don't do that then the train's obviously not going to leave the station once it does that, you can pretty much forget about it. The train's going to go all the way up here, but the the head code will stay at Ambergate. So what I usually do is, once the train's left Ambergate, we'll see that the next service is 2A47 here. So what I'll do is I'll overclick it immediately with 2A47, so it's just sitting there ready for when the train comes back. What will then happen is eventually the train will get to Matlock. When it wants to leave Matlock, it will call you on the phone. And it will request permission to leave Matlock. Now, I'm assuming that theoretically, if you were sending another train up here, you might say, no, you, you can't leave yet because I need to send another train. But looking at the layout, I don't see that's actually physically possible. So I'm not sure why you would ever say no. But you give it permission and the train will obviously come all the way back here to Ambergate. And this is where it gets fun. What, what should happen is you should have a 1S train that goes past that's the last train that goes past here before that class two can come out onto the main line here but you also would have seen two class one trains i think there's a 1c and a 1v will go past here as well so again just be kind of clicking on the things here and checking what times what that leaves ambergate on the return journey at 52 minutes past the hour so you'll find that the 1S train is due here at 52. But of course, if it's a minute or two late, which is pretty much always, then this train is here kind of waiting to go. And obviously, once you've got the gap, you just signal it down onto there. As with a lot of these junctions where the overlaps are quite close together, you might need to cancel down this route. You'll need to cancel that one. You'll need to cancel that. And you possibly I don't think you need to cancel that as well to give this um, route space to um, apply to here. And then obviously once that's out, you can then usually set those straight through again, ready for most of the trains which are gonna to go to Clay Cross. So here, I tend to leave all the buttons autoed, except in this case when that's the 2A train that's just left Ambergate, this is the 2A train that's about to go up there. So generally I'll have these buttons autoed, but again, be careful with the southbound Class six is particularly to take a long time to get down here, very easily blocking the class one train. So get them in the loop as soon as you can. If you're coming further down, I had one earlier where there were two class six trains. I didn't know whether this would uh, whether it was long enough. So, so I ended up sending one down here into the up, up goods line down through the station and the other one I put into the loop here. So you can do that as well. Now, when you come back down to the station, if you've got a freight train, you'll see that most of these have TL as the line. And TL just means use whatever platform you want to. Although in this case, it does actually say to use the up goods line at Derby. So there are these goods, goods lines that kind of avoid the station. They're, they are 15 miles an hour as well, so they're very slow. And of course, the other thing is they do conflict, particularly with this ECS move here, because that one uh, is about to go into Derby into Platform 6. So it will interfere with that. If you stop a train here, there's a good chance that the tail end of it is still going to be up in the, the, goods, the up goods loop here. And likewise, obviously, as soon as you're crossing over into the, the west side of the goods loop, then you're going to be blocking this whole throat of the station. So... You, you know, be very careful. That is not long enough to fit a 500 meter train in. So um, so just be mindful of, of sending freight trains through there. You are allowed to send a freight, a freight train through the main platforms, but there are lots of times when that's not possible because there's just too much traffic going in and out. So that's just obviously up, uh, up to you as the signaler to decide. And then I think the last thing I want to mention is spawned and level crossing. So... This is the third CCTV level crossing. 
Clay Cross, uh, sorry, Clay Mills, not to be confused with. Clay Cross is here. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, Spondon is a little bit of a pain. So you do get an approach warning for trains coming towards Derby. That's fairly good. So as soon as that uh, approach light comes up, you'll get a warning on the messages. It's usually fairly safe to set the route, start lowering the barriers. So that's fine. The problem is that with these southbound trains is you'll get the the warning message pretty much as soon as they get to here, as soon as they start leaving the station, even though they're going 15 miles an hour. So lowering the barriers at that point is a little bit too early uh, and that will take a while. What I sometimes do is I'll just keep the train list up and 1C50, it's moving at 34. OK, so it's starting to speed up. Then I'll usually set the route and lower the barriers. So don't don't be too keen to do it for southbound trains. The only other time, though, like this is, well, if I've got a train coming north, I might as well set the route across on the south as well. The barriers are going down anyway. It might take a little bit longer for that train to get to the level crossing. So it's not it's not ideal. But uh, Derby's fairly generous um, with not penalizing you for leaving the barriers down. So there are some um, simulations where you seem to get a penalty after about five seconds but um pretty generous on here so that shouldn't be too bad so that's pretty much uh the lie of the land you have train ready to start signals in derby so all of the platforms in both directions so you know when the train's ready to go but again be really careful lots of these are running late some of them they're only leaving within two minutes of each other so if one of them is late you need to let the late running one go first really um otherwise you end up kind of screwing up all the others and other than that, it's pretty much either using the mouse wheel like I'm doing and kind of going up and down, using the auto buttons as much as possible so that actually the first point of call you really need to keep an eye on is here. Uh, or the other thing is if, you, if you're clicked within the main window, you can use the number from one to six, uh, six, five. Yeah, one to six to move to different parts of the, um, of the simulation as well. So that might be useful for you if that's the kind of thing you like. But that's um, most of the kind of certainly the beginner's stuff on derby is like I say pretty fun but you know you will start pulling your hair out don't worry about it when you first start it you're getting phone calls all over the place the guys seem to be using these level crossings to take their sheep and cows and stuff across all the time so it, it can get a bit much sometimes but you run it at normal speed just deal with things one at a time be very methodical uh, make sure that you don't have a really annoying ring on your phone like i do and then you should be good to go and at some point, once I finish this uh, this simulation for today, I'm at two in the afternoon at the minute, then I might even try one of the older timetables. But um, yeah, I might put that off for another week. So hopefully that was helpful. Any questions or comments, please chuck them down on the comments and then um, I'll try and answer.